every Tuesday at 830, we are graced with the presence of a multi-time national champion and reigning national champion, the legend herself, Coach Kim Mulkey. Coach Mulkey, what's going on? How does this uh, How does this morning find you? Well, I sat and waited all day for that horrible weather we were supposed to get yesterday. <laughs> I'm still looking out the window like the old folks did back in the day. I'm, uh, you know, I hadn't seen anything but a few raindrops. I see sunshine this morning. My, uh, you, you sound like my wife who is nearly broken by the fact that on the first day after Christmas break, the kids got a half day. Exactly. She just, she I'm just like, needed a little break. <laughs> I blew my mind, but listen, hey, I haven't been in South Louisiana long enough to complain. I know it's better to be safe than sorry. Um, well, Coach, last time we talked, you, you, we were on the edge of, of SEC play. You had Mizzou at home looming. You had a road trip to Ole Miss looming. And here we sit a week later. And what did y'all do? Y'all do what y'all always seem to do. You got it done. And you win the game. Um, let's let's talk about Ole Miss. On the road, a a, a real battle, right? And um, y'all are a team that seems to win by these margins that when you get in a fight, it's almost like surprising at times. How did you feel that your team responded uh, against Ole Miss on Sunday? Well, you know, the last two years, it's been dogfight, too. The first, uh, I can't remember which, we won by four one year. We won by nine, I think, last year. So we're increasing that lead a little bit. We won by 11. They play really good defense. Their strength is the just they're big everywhere. They're athletic. Their defense is better than their offense. And, you know, for a coach, that loves defense and rebounding. I've always had great respect for the job that she's doing. Now, we gave up too many points, and that's a work in progress for us on the defensive end, but we uh, we can score the ball on our worst night. Yeah. You saw we scored 84 <laughs> points. We scored 50 and a half, and I'm sitting here going, okay, so I've got to get this mindset of my team to change. I feel like they have the mindset that, and eh, we're going to outscore everybody. Let them score their points. Mm. And, I've just got to stay on them on the defensive end, and that's not to take anything away from Ole Miss. They were fired up. See, Bob Hester, those guys had a record-breaking crowd. When we pulled up on that bus, I asked the driver, just slow down so these kids can see again what they have created, yeah. this monster that we have created on the road. Now, granted, a lot of those had Ole Miss shirts on, but they were not there to see Ole Miss. They really weren't. No. I think our introduction – was louder than theirs. And wow. it hit me, it hit me when the game was over and you watch Angel Reese go out there to take pictures with those fans who wait and wait. It's almost like I'm coaching the Beatles or something. It's nuts. <laughs> well, and, 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 and it's crazy too because like even the fans who are fans of the school that you are playing are still – there to see y'all, right? Like I grew up in Atlanta, right? We go to Hawks games all the time, but like the the best ones was when like Michael Jordan was coming to town, or or Shaquille O'Neal and the Magic, right? I mean, that's what uh, that's what this is. You know what it kind of reminds me of, Coach? Um, there's a video with with Jim Harbaugh and Lamar Jackson from a couple of years ago, where where Harbaugh is a uh, John Harbaugh, excuse me. He's talking to Lamar Jackson and. He's basically just speaking on the impact that he is having and how proud he is of him because he is setting uh he, he is he's he's such a guiding light for so many young athletes and maybe up to that point we're told, Oh, you're not a quarterback, you can't do this, you can't do that. Um and now you have guys like Jaden Daniels, right, who fully grow up in this era. No, 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 I can do this. And now Jaden training towards being a top pick because of someone like Lamar Jackson's success. Do you see kind of Angel Reese and and your team and these other superstars kind of leading in that same way, proving to young girls out there that, no, no, you can have great success, not just, like, athletically, but financially, character-wise, like, you, you can do this. Well, I think you guys are football players. Let's just back it on up to when your dad played. We want to put people in a box. There was never the mm. dual-threat quarterback years yep. ago. There was never the running quarterback 
And you sit there and you put the good athletes at wide receiver or running back, and I'm thinking, well, hell, the quarterback's a specialty position. Put somebody there that can run the ball sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And they touch the ball and, every play. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then we get scared, oh, they're going to get hurt, and they usually do, but so does the running back, so does the receiver. Times change, guys, is what I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. And when times change, you can't be afraid of it. Mm. And the times have changed for women's basketball, particularly at LSU. Uh, these these kids are celebrities. These kids are millionaires. These kids are. But what hasn't changed is their will to win, and they allow me to coach them. And when that changes, I'm getting out because if you don't have a leader and you don't have discipline in that locker room, and 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 they're not following you then you've lost your locker room. And when I watch them play and I watch them listen and I watch that eye contact and the timeout and I watch their will to win, that's, that's never going to change as long as I'm coaching. But what's the, the attraction is talent. The attraction is winning. But when you sit there and you watch us, I think my son said it best after the game, he went with us to Ole Miss. And he said, Mommy, you got people at Ole Miss coming to watch y'all play that have never watched women's basketball. Yeah. And I said, what are you talking? Who are you talking about? He goes, Mom, I'm sitting with Dash the whole game, the quarterback for Ole Miss. He, he walked in. He's like, this is fun. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> listen to your team. They talk trash. So uh- you have – you have a group of young ladies in that purple and gold that attract different people for different reasons, whether it is Angel Reese's little uh, group or whether it's Flage, uh, whether it's my outfit. Rather, you've got <laughs> a, just a, a bunch of stuff going on, and guys, that's good for women's basketball. It really is. I mean, it's been great. And look at the ratings, and look at attendance numbers, and look at season tickets, right? Like, like it's 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 everything um, that you envisioned when you got here, and then some. It's 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 wild the kind of revolution that is taking place. Um, in terms of what's next, you got a big one coming up Thursday, Coach. It's a good well, Texas A and M team. Yeah, A and M is much improved, and here's the stat that'll stand out when I'm in that film room with them this morning because we had to give them yesterday off. We, I'm big on field goal percentage defense, and that's why I know we're not there yet because mm. we're way lower than I want to be. And A&M is number two in the country in field goal percentage defense, and that tells you that they're guarding people. That tells you they're much more talented than they were. They have a lot of transfers. They have freshmen that are now sophomores and confident. So it's going to be a different A&M team than what maybe you saw in years recent years because they have a new coach who's gone out and, and just improved her team. And we'll get in the film room this morning at, before practice and get after it on the floor and tomorrow get after it and try to hold, you know, home court. We don't want to give up a loss at home. And then we'll go on the road to uh, Auburn yep. Sunday and Auburn is much improved as well. So the transfer portal has made a lot of people better quickly. Yeah, it's kind of it's it's kind of interesting, Coach. I I thought it was gonna lead to kind of a like a hyper concentration of power at the top, but what I kind of have realized is that oh no, it was that already existed. This is democratized college sports where now like seasons aren't sunk like they may have been in the past because you didn't have a point guard or you didn't have a quarterback and. It's really made everybody more competitive, which as a coach, I'm sure is very tough, but as a consumer is is kind of great, right? I mean, it's very exciting. Um, you mentioned the will to win being the same, right? As everything changes around you, uh, what about kind of the core tenets of what it takes to win? Like you mentioned A&M's defense, and obviously you got strength on strength there with the all-scoring going against that A&M defense. Um, but what are your kind of core tenets from style of play in terms of winning a championship or does that does that change team by team I think you have okay <laughs> I have these conversations again with Kramer and my daughter who was on my staff and they ask a lot of detailed questions That's what you probably did you know it's, it's when you grow up in sports you watch you live you learn I think the coaches who get passed by as they get older are the ones that are stubborn and are set in their ways on philosophy. Mm. 
You don't have to change your discipline. You don't even have to like this new generation and, and what's important to them. I get that. <laughs> Some of that is not good. But what you have to do is you have to evolve as a coach and you got to recognize, well, yeah, I'd love to have a great post player all the time. I'd love to have a, a shooting guard. I'd love to have a great point guard. Sometimes you don't have that. So you have to evolve and you've got to change to meet what their strengths are. And I've watched so many coaches and I'll go, what are they running that for? That kid's not capable of doing that. Nope. Yeah. And then I'm like, I hope I never reach that point. Mm. Um, the game started changing in the NBA when, when the post players didn't want to be back to the basket post anymore. They wanted to be guards. So they kind of evolved and changed, and it became all these guards and all that. I've been blessed to have a post, a, a shooting guard, and a, and a point guard. But guys, the world changes. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. But, but this stuff with NIL, Transfer Portal, it has made a lot of competitive teams uh, that weren't competitive yeah. better. Yeah. Um, God, I love your insight, Coach. It's like it's so great. It's every week. It's just lessons that you can apply to not just sports, but every facet of life. Uh, can I? I I'm going to ask you. You don't want to answer. You definitely don't have to. But I'm going to ask you kind of a ridiculous hypothetical here. I don't know if you saw what happened with the Saints on Sunday. Basically, I the knew that. I know, I know, I'm sorry. Coming. I'm sorry. Well, I, I don't know. know. It's like I appreciate your you. insight into these things so much. Well, let me tell you, there's a reason I'm coaching in college and not pros. That was a pro move that was just <laughs> honestly, from a coaching perspective, shame on them. Yeah. Shame on them. Yeah. That yeah. sent a lack of respect uh, towards your coach. Um, hell, that didn't get the coach for Atlanta fired, but. It probably was the nail in the coffin. And um, I, I honestly, I tried to read what Jimmy Graham said, and I just quit reading it. I don't want to hear any excuses <laughs> about why they did this and defend this player and do all he needed his first touchdown. Guys, you don't do that. If you watch us play and we're up and there's less than 30 seconds to go, which is the shot clock, or even in the game, You'll hear me holler red, and you go stand at half court, and you dribble the ball out. Yeah, I've had coaches go score to try to get double figure wins, and when I was young in this business, and I'll never forget it. You just don't do that. There's a way to do it. Now, I've done some bonehead things myself, like I might press when we're up thirty or forty, but <laughs> when I say bonehead, in that moment, I'm viewing our practice. I'm sorry. Our yeah, we got to practice the defense, right? I mean, like that's that's and, the golden opportunity. And if you don't do it in a game situation and non-conference yeah. to get in shape and to see who you want to play, and I might tell the coach ahead of time, hey, I'm not looking at the score. Uh, you're going to get aggravated at me, but i got to get these kids at least 20 minutes a game, all of them, and I'm going to press and work on some things. And um, But – yeah, that I saw that, and I thought I don't give a rip what excuse you give. You dis you. I don't even know the right word. Disobeyed you. I don't know what it is. Yeah, you I think it shows your, a lack of respect for the head coach. You know, I mean, yeah, I, it, it does. It does, and um, and they may love him to death. They may love that coach. I don't know that relationship, but um, that that was not a cool move in any way. Coach Mulkey, the legend. <laughs> Go pack out the PMAC Thursday night, 7 p.m. Texas, 13 and 2, Texas AM, number one in field goal defense, defensive percentage coming to town this Thursday night, 7 p.m., and then Auburn on Sunday. Coach, thank you so much for coming on. It's always like the best part of the week. You have, you have an excellent day. Y'all be good. Bye bye.